you know what? Nope, mm, that's fine. You can just keep your 12 tops. I believe you. Here lies the Dragon Q6A, and I'm guessing you want to rock it, because it's packing an 8-core Dragon Wing 6490 SoC from Qualcomm. 16... wait, did the one fall off? Make that 6 gigs of RAM? Ah, the 6 gig and 12 gig model was added later when we found that at this size it would be a price volume sweet point. But we do get HDMI 2.0 at 4K60, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, and a gigabit ether hole along with your standard 40 pin GPIO. Storage, we get an SD slot, NVMe, and on the belly, EMMC that supports something neat. UFS. This guy. Little green. It looks like EMMC, but it can sling data bits at over a gigabyte a second. And like a $5 milkshake, I need to see what that tastes like. But Rasta likes to keep me on my toes, so they didn't include a UFS reader, and uh, they're currently out of stock on the store. So I'm going to use the Dragon without an OS to flash an OS so I can install an OS right after I update the firmware, because that's step one. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the legendary, nay, mythical Type A to Type A USB A cable. And you need to order one. Link in the description. Because step zero is putting the Dragon in EDL mode. That's where this button comes in. Give it a squeeze and apply the electrons. Now let's plug this in into a PC and crack open a terminal. A quick look at LSUSB shows the Q6A is connected and in the proper mode. Now it can send over the new brain bits using EDLNG. Yes, this takes a bit longer than a spirit bomb, but that's that. It's now safe to power down the dragon. Rasta's Ubuntu image is ready to go if you only plan to run it from an SD card. Nah. I want to run the system from NVMe, or at least a USB flash drive, but that requires mounting the image and hacking around in the grub config every time you want to flash it on a different media type. So it's time to summon Shenron, my little script that downloads the image and applies the correct grub settings. I'm using NVMe for this one, so it's time to write the image using GNOME Disk and pop it in the Q6A. Time to plug it in. Now I'm really curious to see what type of image Rasta cooked up for the dragon. Hello Ubuntu, I'm Ubuntu and my password is Ubuntu. All right, prompted to change the password. Let's finish the setup and desktop pulse. All right, feels like it's hardware accelerated to me. Time to poke around in the settings. Wi-Fi connects to the AP in the studio. Ethernet connected at one gig and iPerf3 is showing 940 on the send and receive. So that's a bingo. Bluetooth sees my Xbox controller. Without any additional fuss, plenty of available resolutions to choose from, and no issues displaying 1080p 60. How about the audio? Left over here and right over other here. Now, KDisk Mark is showing 1.6 GB sustained read and 1.3 GB writes on the little Micron NVMe drive using the peak performance preset. The UFS module is doing a little bit of all right with 1.5 GB sustained reads and hmm only 250 megabyte sustained writes. That write speed is a limitation of the 6 gig Dragon Q6A, not the UFS module. Let's take a peek at Geekbench and it's showing the Dragon Wing 6490 outperforming the Rockchip 3588 in both single and multi-core. Not by much, and keep in mind, this is Geekbench. And out of the box, the image needs over 100 security updates, so let's go ahead and give it an update and see if it survives a reboot, because that's not always a given with these images. Hey, look at that, it survived the reboot. So it's time for the Can It Play a 1080p YouTube video without exploding test. Now I have to imagine this Dragon Wing SoC can just brute force its way through without any acceleration. And yeah, you know what, it's almost pulling it off, dropping around 10 frames per second. But I do wonder if the Chromium PPA is a better love story. Now, I don't know if it supports the Qualcomm SoC yet, but it's worth a try. All right, look at that. You know what? I'm going to take one drop frame every couple of seconds over 10 frames per second. Going to give Chromium the win on this one. Using a passive cooler on the Q6A is averaging around 2 gigahertz for the first 20 seconds of the Stress NG run, and that drops to about 1.3 gigahertz by the three minute mark, with temps hovering around 86C during the majority of the run. Now, max temp on the Dragon Wing is around 95C, and it survived by downclocking. But the excess heat has to go somewhere, 
and it bakes the surrounding components like the UFS module, RAM, and NVMe. A little heatsink might get you by for light bursty loads, but you're going to want active cooling on this critter for maximum performance and longevity. Still, 10 watts under load and a 2 watt idle is a bit of alright for an 8 core part, but it's nothing special. It's time to fire up the old VK Mark and see if the Vulcan bits are accelerated. It's seeing the Turnip 643 spinning the cube at just under 5,000 frames per second, and that means it's working, really. Nothing more, but I can check out the performance with a bit of Vulcan Quake 3. Running the time demo pegs the 90 FPS frame cap at 1080p, and if we rip that off, things jump up to, well, it's kind of all over the place, but what, that looks like 300-ish average? Now I do want to try a bit of retro emulation with Dock Station using the Vulcan render, and that sound brings back memories of playing this classic PS1 title for the first time just a couple of weeks ago, because this unholy fan game lets you play as Sonic, Tails, and my man, Knuckles the Enchilada. But how about something that looks and plays like a fan game? DBZ Ultimate Battle 22. It runs well enough, but did this actually get released? Like, people exchanged money for this? Ha. Huh. Moving on to a bit of Dreamcast emulation using Flycast, you know the game, and you know that song. Have fun humming it. For the next few days, it's running just fine. No slowdowns, and it even picked up my Xbox controller. And I forgot just how twitchy the driving is in this game. But it's so good to see it up and running. And if you're wondering about FromSoft's latest title, using Box64 to handle the x86 to ARM conversion, using the OpenGL render, the Dragon Q6A is eking out 40 FPS at 1080p. And that's more the same using Vulkan. But the neat part is that it's working at all even a little bit, and this is at 1080p. Take that, Moss Mama. So it turns out the Q6A is packing up to 12 tops of AI compute, and I wanted to try that out with YOLO V8, but that required installing QAI App Builder, that required installing the QAI RT SDK, that required installing Conda, and creating a conda putt. You know what? Nope, mm, that's fine. You can just keep your 12 tops. I believe you. All right, I promised you a bit of a magic trick and this is really cool and it could save you. If all you have is a UFS module and a Dragon Q6A, can you install Linux? Well, that depends. How do you feel about building Armbian from scratch? I mean, it's not that bad. Plus I have a guide posted on the Interfacing Linux forums. And I suggest you give it a read because you can use the firmware flashing utility to write the image to UFS while the Q6A is in EDL mode. Give it a reset, fill out the setup bits, and look at that. Ta-da! Even in this early state, the Dragon Q6A really does have all the makings of a fun hobbyist PC. NVMe, UFS, and this Qualcomm SoC can keep up with the rock chip of fellas. But I don't know if I'd go for the 6 gig version if I was planning on using it for desktop applications. Application, yes. But more than that, maybe not so much. Also, it didn't come with an NVMe screw and of all the places to cut corners, this ain't one. Missing that little screw can wreck a weekend hobby project. And you'll need to slap on some cooling if you want slightly better than above average performance. That is, unless you're a fan of Rasda's desktop cooling solutions, don't pretend you've never done that. The only real hurdle is knowing that you're gonna to have to update the firmware right out of the box, and probably more than once, but it's not that big of an issue. So I guess it boils down to price, doesn't it? I don't know what dragons go for in 2025, but I'm sure the dragon pricing specialist will let me know down in the comments. And maybe tap the like button on your way down there. It genuinely helps out the channel. But that's going to do it for this one, so I want you to get out there and make something awesome.